Welcome back to another episode of Solid Start, a Monday podcast designed to help get your week off to a solid start by focusing on life from God's perspective. We're coming to you from Merrill Bros in Coco, Indiana, Biosolids Management Corporation. My name is Greg Reed. I'm the life coach here at Merrill Bros, and I'm joined by my ever popular and uh, amazing co-host, Brian Herzog. Brian, welcome. Thank you. How's life in the fast lane for you? Uh, doing okay. Had a um, big week of soccer. Okay. Soccer last yeah. week. And you're coaching uh, high school. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I'm really enjoying that. Uh, we lost our first game, but um, we have a lot to build upon. Okay. Did you get enough girls? <laughs> uh, to... we, we had just enough. Okay. Just uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got three games this week and. Temperatures are. I was gonna say what nineties or something yeah, like that. Ninety so, plus. Yeah. yeah. So it's gonna be rough. Told them to hydrate, hydrate, <laughs> hydrate all day, so. and then hydrate some more. Yes. Yeah. 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 Do they ever cancel soccer? They do. Okay. Um, if it's yeah, depending either on lightning the, or yeah. if it's too hot, that or kind of too thing. Hot, yeah. Now rain, they'll they'll move right through it. Right. We enjoy the rain. You enjoy unless it's freezing rain. It's crazy. Yes. Like the the soccer season. Like we we have uh, parents that are going to be bringing. Uh, canopies out this evening to cover us yeah, from the sun, right. and those same canopies will be used in a month, in a week for like freezing rain. Yeah, <laughs> all in the same <laughs> season. It's not. Nice. Yeah, it is. You know, basketball is just always cold because it's in the winter. But <laughs> yeah, uh, but you're inside. But, but you're inside. Yeah, there, there's yeah. a little difference. Yeah, it is different. Yeah. Okay, good. All good though. I love it. That's great. Well, hey, we started our uh, Monday uh, safety meeting this morning with a uh, audience participation, which the team really loves, I'll have to say. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or not. <laughs> and so I had a, uh, if you remember, I had a, a rectangle on the uh, on the screen, and I asked, uh, what's, it, what's the point called where the two lines intersect? Obviously, there are four points on a rectangle. And did you know the answer? I did not. Okay. I was guessing along with everyone else saying, a <laughs> hey, there were, there were lots of guesses, a point, 90 a degrees, corner, a point, 90 yeah, degrees, yeah, 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 an angle, yes. whatever it is, yeah. And it's actually called the vertex, or the four of them are called vertices. So it's that place where two lines or even a ray comes together. And so then I put up a triangle uh, onto the screen and ask how many vertices. So just for audience participation, Brian, how many vertices are there on a triangle? Three. Three. Way to go. You got Thank it. You. But how many triangles? It was just, just I one. just had one on the screen. And so the point of all of that math this morning uh, is the fact that one of the great mysteries of the Christian faith, I think one of the ways to illustrate that is with a triangle. So in the middle, uh, you could put God, that there's one God, just like there's one triangle. But there are three vertices, or three points on that triangle. And at the top, I put Father, uh, lower left, Son, lower right, Holy Spirit. Just try, and if you said, hey, Greg, could you explain the mystery of the Trinity? My answer would be, absolutely not. <laughs> I don't have a clue. But one of the ways that it's often illustrated is with a triangle. And the reason I did that this morning is because we're in the book of Acts, mm -hmm. and we're saying, how is this far better life possible? And we know that it's only possible by life in the Holy Spirit. And it's easy for me to understand father, because I had a father. Mm -hmm. It's easy for me to ha understand son. I have a son, and also Jesus as the son of God. He came as a real person, so they could see him, touch him, all of that, you know, travel with him. But the Holy Spirit, that's really much different, and it's, it's much harder. Do you remember as a kid growing up what what your thoughts were about Holy Spirit, because King James didn't help us any, right. because they called him the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, yeah. and I'm thinking Casper, the friendly ghost, yeah. all that. So, what were your thoughts growing up when you heard either Holy Ghost mm -hmm. or Holy Spirit? Maybe yeah. had, maybe you understood it well, right? And and then all of the illustrations that we hear about the Holy Spirit come like coming as a, a wind or, yeah. or a fire. Mm -hmm. I, it it kind of felt like it was just some 
ghost or yeah, spiritual yeah, like thing it's that a was force, just, yeah, almost yeah. like may the force be with you exactly. kind of thing, exactly, yes. yeah, yeah. So it, it didn't feel like there was any connect, like I couldn't have a connection as yes. a kid growing yes. up. That yeah, it just felt like disconnected yeah. from that. But but absolutely with God the Father and and His Son, yeah, right. There was a connection there. But yeah. that the third piece, it was just always an outlier. Like I uh, could never yeah. fully grasp what what the Bible was talking about. I know, because in that idea of thinking about a person, because the Father's a person, we get that, we understand the Father, mm-hmm. the Son's a person, but then you think, a ghost, like how does that fit? And so I'm so thankful that more modern translations have said, Holy Spirit. One uh, uh, famous author, Francis Chan, has even written a book, The Forgotten God, mm-hmm. and it's about the fact that we've forgotten that person of, of the Trinity right. is the Holy Spirit, and I think that's really well said. So we're going to pick up the story where we left off last Monday. We're in the book of Acts, and some of you uh, should be uh, received, maybe all of you should get a text every day, uh, Monday through Saturday, that uh, gives you a link where you can listen through the New Testament in one year. And right now, we just happen to be in the book of Acts. So we're picking up in Acts chapter 2, where uh, Peter write, or where Peter says, uh, on the day of Pentecost, and that's the festival of first harvest. So all of you farmers under will understand that one. It was like a big party where all the Jewish people from all over the world would come together to celebrate the harvest. It's like, God, thanks for the harvest. Thanks for what you produced. And so all the believers, it says, were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then they what looked like tongues uh, of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So, I mean, God's really the God of special effects. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, how you can't see the Holy Spirit. He's invisible. So you couldn't just see him come and live inside. But when you, when there's a windstorm, the house, uh, it appears like they're flames of, uh, they're like flames or tongues of fire. And that everyone starts to speak in a foreign language is like, wait a minute, something must be happening. Yeah. So Jesus uh, was doing, God was doing his best to say, man, there's, there's a new person in town. Then it says they were amazed and perplexed. There we go. No wonder. And they said, what can this mean? Uh, others in the crowd ridicule them, saying they're just drunk, that's all. And then Peter stands up and, and says, hey, this is, this is not about somebody being drunk. Uh, this is about the fact that God is doing something that was predicted by the prophet Joel long ago. And so when you think, Brian, about the uh, Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, he was more like a visitor. He would come and empower someone for a task, maybe mm-hmm. to work on the temple, Samson to, you know, kill a bunch of Philistines, and then he would leave. So he's like, he's like a, you know, you go and visit a place, then you leave. You go visit a place, you leave. That's kind of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But Joel has, Joel predicted probably 500 years before this, that something different was going to happen. So I think I'm going to have you to, you know, read the rest of the story from Acts 2, where Joel's prophecy uh, is, is re- the, the author of, uh, of the book of Acts, Luke, reminds us that Joel had something different in mind. God was up to something new. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made his son, Jesus, whom you crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Brian, that's where 
then there's this dramatic change because now the Holy Spirit is more like a resident. He comes not coming and going like a visitor. Right. God's plan is that he would come and live inside of us as a person to empower us. It says, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. Wow. You know, as a pastor, I was always praying that people would respond to my message. Uh, I would have to humbly say, that never happened. <laughs> 3,000? <000. laughs> Maybe three? <laughs> hey, three's good. But, but uh, three's good. So... It's, it's just a whole different arrangement that God had once Jesus left. So we're 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, and now God says, I'm going to send the person of the Holy Spirit to live inside of you as a resident. Mm-hmm. And I love the uh, quote by Jim Simbla. He's a pastor and a prolific author. He says this, in the New Testament, we are breathing different air. And I love that. It's oh, yeah, just the reminder so that in order to live this far better life, we have to breathe different air. And I thought about the fact that three years ago at this very time, the last week of August, I was working on a letter to my church board and to our denominational officials saying that at, by the end of the year, 2021 in December, I would be leaving. And it was the only job I had ever had as an adult, the only full-time job. I was there 43 years. It was a job I loved. Mm. But I knew that the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me was just really prompting me and speaking to me and working in my heart and mind and spirit to say, Greg, there's there's something different that I have in mind for you. There's a different way. I want you to pastor a church without walls rather than a church with walls. And so that's led to becoming a workplace life coach. That's led to an opportunity to have connections with over 600 people as a life coach. And that never could have happened, Brian, I promise you. I'm just As you know, I'm not that smart. Maybe you've even told me that before. <laughs> Craig, you're not that smart. Many times. <laughs> many times. <laughs> not just once, many times. Uh, and that's true. But the Holy Spirit, uh, He's God, and so He's the one that helped me to put all these things together that I never... I mean, I started a, a whole new company at age 70 and said, uh, I'm not going to have any income by the end of the year, but the Holy Spirit made it all possible that I could have a connection with Merrill Bros and several other companies, and He just worked that all out. Yes that I never could have done on my own. So that's that's where we're headed uh, for the next several weeks, is that we're going to talk about different air. And that's the fact that it's only possible to live the far better life when we're breathing different air, and it's the air of the Holy Spirit, the person who comes to take up residence inside of us when we repent of our sins and say yes to Jesus. Brian, we had the opportunity to pray this morning for uh, uh, three of our teams that are doing a lot of the the building of things, putting things together. Or it's like big erector sets, mm-hmm. and they're tying all this stuff together. So our fabrication team, engineers, electrical team, um, I want to be able to pray for uh, for those men. It's just a huge job. Every time I hear that we're you know launching something else, it involves one of those three teams or mostly all of them yeah, right so we, heavily involved in a lot yeah. of a lot of dangerous and yeah. dangerous work yeah too, lots but. of stuff that's happening all i mean they're mm-hmm. preparing all of that for what's going on in florida they're building a lot of stuff here mm-hmm. so uh, what they're doing is impacting our company uh, nationwide so i'll do that and then i'll i'll have you to uh, wrap things up if you will yeah i will pray for one of our facilities in florida we have 50,000 tons of compost that we need to sell and get rid of a year's worth. Yes. Uh, so we need God's help. Yes, we do. <laughs> so getting rid of that compost. You can't just keep piling up. <laughs> no, no. So we'll, we'll pray for that. Okay, great. Father, thank you for the fact that you've given uh, just very specific skills to um, the people that work at Merrill Bros, and thanks that this team has uh, a huge variety of people that uh, bring the gifts and abilities you've given to them, and so Mm -hmm. we thank you for uh, all these people that are putting together the pieces 
that make the final products uh, to have sanitation facilities, to have uh, places where we can uh, create materials that can be sold and, and can be put in bags and pelletized, and, and it takes machinery in order to be able to do that. So we give you thanks for the guys that work on fabrication, for our engineers, and for the electrical team. What a talented group of men that you've given to this mm-hmm. company. And so we just ask you to continue to give them divine favor, wisdom to know how to solve problems, um, because every day there are new issues that they're trying to figure out. And so thank you for that, and we know that we need you, because apart from you, we really can do nothing. Father, I want to pray for our compost facility in Florida. We bring everything to you in prayer, God, and we need to get rid of this product. And uh, pray that you would help us with that, God. Bring um, solutions uh, for us to sell this compost and uh, get rid of 50,000 tons worth of it. Uh, we, we're just putting that in your hands, God, and trusting that you'll help us there. And Father, I want to pray for all of us, um, those listening and even our family members and We're all dealing with something. We're all, Mm -hmm. we have struggles. God, there's a lot of uncertainty in our lives, questions that we have, unanswered questions. And and so, God, if there's someone listening right now that that is going through a situation that they don't know how to handle, or there is that uncertainty, or there's a health issue, whatever it might be, God, I pray that you would just speak to them right now. And and I'm I'm praying that they would just open up their hearts and say, God, help me. And allow the Holy Spirit to live in them and help with the decisions in their life. And it's your Son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, on behalf of Merrill Bros, Brian and I want to thank you for listening to uh, this episode of Solid Start, a podcast focusing on life from God's perspective. Please let us know if there are ways that we can pray specifically for you. You can go to MerrillBros.com and click on the prayer tab at the top of the page. And as always, have a fabulous day.